Hey guys, The Dreaming City has so much to offer us this week that it's crazy. It seems like the longer Forsaken's out, the more there is to do, and that's exactly what I've been looking for in this game since 2014. However, within the Blind Well, we are now at the last rotating Tier 4 boss. It's first Scorn, then Hive, and now we have Taken. So let's dive in and show you guys everything that you need to do to beat this week's Tier 4 boss, the right way this time. Guardians, what's up guys? Sly here, back at it with another Dreaming City Guide and Tier 4 Boss Guide. First off, I want to apologize for last week's guide. Like most of you know, I was without power for about a week during the hurricane. And during that week, the first new Dreaming City missions popped up, as well as the new Strike the Corrupted, where a new game mechanic was introduced, throwing the Awoken charges to teammates in order to charge them for it to do more damage. Well, since I missed the first Broken Courier mission, the Strike was actually blocked until I completed the next mission, which was, you know, the week after that. And I put that off until I finished my Tier 4 guide. So, I didn't even know about the Awoken charges until I first saw them within last week's Tier 4. I thought I had it figured out after trying it for a while, and I incorrectly made the assumption that if you held on to the charges, it would charge them up before throwing it at the boss instead of the correct way of passing it between teammates. So that was wrong, and while everything else was spot on, I was incorrect in total. So I do apologize about that. This week's Tier 4, however, is going to be the easiest out of them all. Once again, we are fighting a freaking looking servitor called Inomina. The mechanics for this tier 4 fight are exactly the same as the last campaign mission where you fight the one that's taken over by Riven. So let's jump into it guys. To do a tier 4 unstable light charge you first have to put in a tier 3 and complete it. Since the last update a week ago Bungie patched the Telesto trick where you can basically skip through the beginning and go right for the boss. So now you have to do it the right way and fight your way through all the exterior wells before meeting back up in the middle for the boss fight. So once you get to the Herald in tier 3, <laughs> you must beat it. By now, the majority of you guys should be in the upper 550, 560s, if not higher than that. Once you make it to like 570, lower 570s, tier 4 is no longer even a challenge. And all of it is going to be quite easy. So as usual guys, in tier 3, Melting Point Titans, Wall of Radiance, Blade Barrage, all of these are awesome for taking down the boss's shields. Once you get to 570 or above, you can get your harmony buff, melting point the boss, and one hammer super will take down the boss's shield completely. Either way, melting point is probably the most important aspect of doing damage in tier 3 and tier 4, so try to have at least one of those in the group. It's definitely not a must have, but it does make things easier for sure. Slap down a well of radiance between the two bosses and work on the shields while the titan works the top one by himself. With supers coming in fast due to harmony, it's quite easy. Once you beat all of the tier 3 bosses, there will be kind of a long pause right before the chest spawns. That's your opportunity to head down to the main well where you start the encounter, and that's when you want to insert the unstable light charge. It'll be in the same spot that you started tier 3. So plop that bad boy in, and once it's in, get ready for tier 4. So this week is quite easy. You're going to want to use the same loadout as tier 3. A good heavy weapon like sleeper, black spindle, linear fusions, rockets, etc. However, you do want to have a shotgun. Now the tier 4 boss this week starts out in the same position as a tier 1 boss right there by the steps. And it seems like if you can apply enough damage to the boss when he's at this first spot, it will kind of stun him long term and then you can just melt him without doing any of the mechanics for the fight. We burned this guy down the second time around in like 15 seconds, so it seems like doing massive damage at the very first area will stun him for a very long time. Either that, or it glitches him out, one of the two. But if you don't get the damage in, you'll start to see Taken Blights appear. Each Blight gives the boss an immunity shield, just like the final campaign mission where you fight pretty much the same guy. However, this time around, the lower the boss's health, the more blights will spawn, and at the very end, you could have like 6 blights shielding him at once. Just walk in, use your shotgun, roam around the map taking out the blights, and once the final one is down, make sure you apply melting point, super sleeper whisper. His critical spot is just like the other bosses, right in the center. Once the immunity shields are down, just go to town, and that's it my friend, this is the easiest tier 4 boss to date. I'm sure everyone's power level has something to do with that now, but it's not really even a challenge anymore. Tier 3 is actually harder than this guy. So my advice is to get all three of your characters through tier 4 every week, because tier 4 is a pretty powerful drop once you beat it. 
Also, just as a quick reminder, I'll have my dungeon guide up here soon as well, but the very first encounter within the Shattered Throne dungeon also drops you a powerful reward. So even if you can't beat the first boss without glitching it, take your characters through the first part, which is pretty easy and make sure you get that drop before it disappears. It's a top tier reward just like a raid drop or a dreaming city drop, not those one or two level higher drops from daily challenges. So do your character a favor and don't let that go to waste. But that is it guys, just hop from blight to blight, get rid of that shield and once you do, like I said, apply melting point, sleeper, snipers, boom, you are done. Now there is so much going on in Destiny that I don't even have enough time to make all of these videos. I still have Malfeasance to cover, the new dungeon, finish my last three raid guides that are, that are like halfway edited, two more Dreaming City secrets, the last wish quest, and... A tons of shit so expect lots more videos coming out over the next week or two but for now guys that is it for me as always thank you for watching and for being awesome slime nation is nothing without you and that's not just my channel that's every channel no matter how big they are so thank you for watching and for supporting what i'll do i'm still not a full-time youtuber you know i have the normal thing going on but we're slowly getting there guys and you are making it possible once again, thank you and here's to the future. Subscribe for lots more Destiny 2 Forsaken and Dreaming City Guides. Spank that thumbs up, but only if you enjoyed yourself. And comment down below if you have any tips or tricks you'd like others to know about, or if you just want to say what's up. Every comment and like goes a long way to supporting medium-sized channels like mine. But I'm out, Guardians. Have a good one and have fun this week. Check me out on Twitter or Facebook at Sly Nation or Sly Nation Gaming on the FB. Keep those eyes and ears open for more vids coming out here very soon. But until then, this is your dude Sly, and I'll catch you next time.